uh, hi everyone. Thanks a lot for watching this second part of the Azure IAM video. So in this video, we are going to cover Azure guardrails and the security controls. So the first thing what Microsoft provides is they call it a Prince privilege identity management. The whole idea of this privilege identity management or PIM is, is to help us to manage, control, and monitor access to uh, Azure AD, AD, or Microsoft resources within your organization. In short, like uh, most of the users on a day-to-day -day basis, they read, they need some sort of a read level permissions only whenever they want to assume, for example, a global administrator role or a subscription owner or a contributor role that has a lot more permissions, what they can do. So using this PIM workflow, they can elevate their roles for a very short period of time. Uh, again, uh, so the whole idea is providing or assuming a just-in-time privileges. Uh, and whenever any user is assuming, uh, assuming a uh, assuming a uh, privileged role. So what's going to happen, the permissions will automatically be taken away after like a couple of hours of time. And just imagine if any attacker, they get hold of the user credentials or something, they get hold of the user session, they will not be able to do much damage because the permissions will automatically be taken away after a short time interval. So behind the scenes, what Microsoft Azure do whenever you are going to enable a PIM for the Azure resources, it will create a MSPIM user and it is going to put that user into the user access administrator role onto the Azure, uh, Azure Microsoft Azure site. Last but not the least is whenever any user, they want to elevate their role, either uh, you can enforce additional MFA or or user can go through additional workflow approvals here. Uh, the next set of guardrail, what Microsoft Azure provide is Azure policy. So don't confuse it with AWS policy as it means a totally different things. So Azure policy help us to enforce the standard and to assess the compliance at the scale. It primarily restrict the actions at the resource level. So even if, for example, user has the permissions to spin off, uh, spin off the Azure Key Vault, for example, uh, Azure Key Vault in the in the public network. But if we are restricting it using the Azure policy or the guardrails, so you will see users' action is going to get denied. Again, we will be uh, looking into the quick demonstration as well. So here are the few common use cases. With Azure policy, the first use case is you can allow a specific resource type. Uh, if you want to restrict, uh, restrict your users to spin up any kind of a resources outside your country because of the compliance or the David test of integrity reason, that's where the Azure guardrails or the Azure policy comes into picture. If you want to allow your users to, to, to spin off a specific virtual machine as KUs only because of the cost or something, you will be able to do that. If you want to enforce the tagging of the resources, that could be another use case. Again, there are quite a number of use cases here. So now we will look into, into the Azure policy demonstration. Again, uh, it's a very short video, what I have created. So here, so what we will do first, we will go into the Azure policy. So I have pre-created all these Azure policies, like five different policies, because it takes around like 30 minutes to take effect and it will help you to understand the compliance type. If you look at the view definition, you will be able to understand, hey, what these entire JSON and what exactly uh, you are trying to do. And another thing what you can do, you can go to the edit assignment, you will be able to see a lot more details. So here, if you see, I have assigned this policy at the tenant root group, okay? It will get inherited to all the child resources. So here I'm just aligned Hey, for the this particular resource, uh, it can spin off only in the specific like 12 countries and then I'm providing a reason or something. So this is one of the Azure policy gonna look like. Then I've created another policy for the Azure uh, resource groups. Again, I have applied this policy at the tenant group. So here I'm just allowing to spin up the, spin up the resource groups 
only at four specific locations. Yeah, Asia, Asia specific, Southeast Asia, and so on. Then uh, I have enabled the purge protection. So like if anybody accidentally delete the resources or something, so then with the purge protection, you will be able to see or you will be able to recover the resources here at a later point of the time. And the last but not the least, ideally you shouldn't be spinning off any of the resources on the public uh, subnet. So especially the resources like Azure Key Vault or something. So that's where I have enabled a, a different set of policies. So now I'm going to go to the subscription. I will try out performing a couple of different actions here. Uh, this particular user is already a owner role. So as a user, from a user perspective, it has all the permissions available. So here, the first error you see, I cannot spin up any kind of a resources in the East US here. So, so this is the first thing what we see. And now we will try to spin up here another set of resources, probably Azure Key Vault. Yeah. So once we try to spin up this Azure Key Vault, and uh, you will see uh, the first error we got, we cannot spin up in the East US because we have already configured a policy. And then you can define a name or something, the Key Vault name. So here I'm just defining a test policy. Uh, so here the project purge protection is disabled as of now. And then on the networking, I'm setting it to all networks at the moment here. So once I click on a review and create but button, uh, you will see the validation has been failed because of two different policies. The first policy, the key vault should have the purge protection enabled and we should be disabling the uh, access here, public access here. So here I'm just selecting private endpoint as an example here. So here you will see, so once you do that, all your validations are gonna be, uh, are gonna pass here. So that concludes the Azure policies uh, brief demonstration. So then within the Microsoft Azure, they provide another th very interesting thing, they call it a Azure logs. So what it does, it can help you to provide a additional layer of protection from accidental deletion or modification. Here are two different categories type. The first category type is called cannot delete. It can help authorize users to read and modify a resource, but can't delete a resource. The second type is called uh, read only. You cannot even modify or delete the resource. The only thing what you can do, you can simply read, read the resources, yeah. Then there is another thing within the Microsoft Azure, they call it a Azure Blueprint. So it primarily comprises of your Azure resource group, role assignment, different pol uh, policies and the resource manager template deployments. So basically what it does, it pull all these resources and artifacts together. These packages can then be composed versions and assigned to a specific subscription. And all these uh, blueprint packages can be easily audited and tracked. Again, I haven't got a chance to play a lot on this Azure Blueprint. So, but one more thing to take note. Uh, so these Azure Blueprint is still in a preview stage. So then within the Microsoft Azure, this is how this entire evaluation logic is gonna look like. The first thing is, so it is going to check all the assignment. First, it is going to look at the deny assignment. As soon as it finds out a specific action has been denied, so that's where the tip, that's where the user request is going to be blocked, or application request is going to be blocked. If there is no deny action, then it is going to evaluate the role assignment. If a specific role has been assigned to the security principal, if all the conditions has been met the access is going to be allowed. For example, if there is no role assignment has been uh, has been given to the user or uh, there is some condition user is not meeting, uh, meeting, so that's where access is going to be restricted. To simply put, 
like any other cloud service provider in the Microsoft Azure also, they support the explicit deny, uh, explicit deny, allow, and then implicit deny, deny uh, implicit deny. So this is a little bit about Azure evaluation logic. So I think that's it from my side. Thanks a lot, everyone, for watching this short video on the Azure guardrails and the security controls. Talk to you guys next time.